the Maranatha Christian Church is present in countries all over the world and nations all over the world. It is present in all three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, and is connected by the same doctrine and the, from the direction of the Holy Spirit with the living word. Brothers from all parts of the world participate in one service together in the same body and in the same spirit through the transmitted service. And brethren from all over the world live a moment of fellowship and communion like the servants lived in Egypt when they left Egypt and when Jesus died on the cross. People from parts of all over the world have been converted by the word of God and by the shout that we give that he is coming back. Brethren, a peace of the Lord. We are transmitting this Sunday school from the Manai of Dominguez Martins. And we are transmitting the second period of the main class. And we're, we are united in the Manai for beginners. And today we're going to be, we're going to just be commenting on the event that we had on the 24th and how the Lord realized this great project that He has in our lives. And this, this event that we had was all over the newspapers and multiple newspapers were broadcasting about this event that we had. All these different states, São Paulo, Pernambuco, the news for São Paulo, multiple pages in the news broadcasting and talking about the event that we had in Rio. In Minas Gerais, different magazines talked about this event, and multiple different internet portals, different um, news websites broadcasted this event as well. All of these different websites was broadcasting this event and talked about this event that we had and we had multiple um, news broadcasters at this event that regis registered about this event and today the whole entire Brazil is learning more about our church and learning more about the message of the return of the Lord that we have been preaching throughout all of our services for a long time and this is a really big number of visitors that we have been receiving and all of those who were present in the services we ask the, the pastors that still haven't done this we're asking so the pastors can assist and pay attention to the visitors here we have a, an image 
of the of a community in Horaima, of the event that they participated in, all the different churches participating in this event. Um, we had a group in Venezuela also um, watch the event, and they were marveled. They were astounded by what they saw. In Japan, the brethren there at dawn, they were watching the event and participating with us, our brethren in Japan. And in Kyrgyzstan, they have also participated in this event. In New Zealand, at dawn, they were watching our event. Also in Nicaragua, they also watched this event and participated with us. In Argentina, they were having a seminar and they also watched this event and also in Cuba. These are just some examples of cities and countries all over the world who participated in this event with us. In Havana, Cuba, they also participated and the brethren are there and they're evangelizing and they are telling other people about God and they are realizing this problem this, um, this event of evangelization we're going to have a few announcements there were some consecrations and seminars there was a special service in Rio with the um, workers of the government. There was more evangelizations throughout Brazil and throughout different cities. There was a, an evangelization in a nursing home, too. People went out in the streets and they were singing and evangelizing in Rio, also in Villa Velha. There were multiple baptisms as well through Espírito Santo and Maranhão in Rio de Janeiro as well, multiple parts of Rio. There were anointings for deacons. And in Vila Velha, there was more baptisms. We are just transmitting to the brothers these events that have happened. And now we're going to start our Sunday school. Brethren, we just want to um, give continuation to the sequence of the, of the topics that we have talked about last week and the 24th. And the topics that we are going to be talking about today is going to be clarifications and things that are related to what we talked about last week. So today, we are going to be preparing to study. We're going to study aspects of the fourth trumpet and we're going to examine the fourth trumpet in relation to Paul and his letters to Corinthians and also to the first letter of Paul to Thessalonians. But before we do that, we're going to have an introductory word from Pastor Jadochi. Peace of the Lord, brethren. In first place, we want to give some information in relation to the work that was realized by the churches and in multiple regions and the region particularly of Grande Vitória in Guarapari and we're going to talk about the performance of these regions that was proportionally proportional of a group of brethren, a group of members. In Cariacica it was a Lord has given um, the blessing of them being the region that has given the most visitors to us. And in a region very close, they have helped each other and have had a lot of visitors. In Vitoria, 
and Funaun. They are in fifth place, Villa Velha. They are all places that have received a lot of visitors, an abundance of them. And we're just stating the top regions. In sixth place is a serra these are different cities in brazil there's so many pastors there but they're in sixth place we don't know why this is so but they're all working very hard but i want to say one thing the church of this pastor has broken the record there's a lot of visitors there Guarapari, a lot of people there as well, and in seventh place was a Grand Vitória. In first place, our, our happiness is we are very excited that there has been so many people going to Sao Paulo because this has always been a state that has been very slow and now they are finally taking notice of this work that we are accomplishing there and we are very pleased with all of the visitors and the results that we have been seeing there. In second place, Rio Grande do Sul. Glory to God because there's a lot of people working there. They have fought a lot and they have worked very hard to receive all these visitors. In third place, and fourth is Espírito Santo. It's in fourth place. This is proportional to the group of, to how many members that are there, which is a great amount. Espírito Santo has had the most visitors. On Sunday, we saw these statistics, and we are still seeing all of the pe all of the numbers and all of the people coming in. In Miami, we're seeing we're waiting for these statistics in different um cities all over the world. We've had a problem in a city here in Brazil and the Lord has showed us one live in particular and the Lord has told us that we are going to see with time those that have those that are worried, those that have the doctrine, we're going to see clearly. And the Lord has given us, given me a text. And he says, the work of the Lord. There are people who are associated with others and all they want to do is bring badness into the churches. But the man in this work, he has to be integrated, he has to be committed. He can't be outside and inside. We are showing the teachings in Nehemiah and we are showing all of these teachings and so we are announcing this and we are telling everyone that this this work, you have to have commitment to this work. We have told this, the whole world this. People who aren't committed are staying behind. And the people who are who are out in the world, the ones who are crippled, the ones who are blind and, and deaf, they are the ones who are accepting because that's the ones that the Lord has been reaching out to. And in the parable of the banquet, we are reminding our brethren that there is still time. The work of the Holy Spirit is this one. There's a, a big door and there's a big opportunity 
and the ones who haven't understood yet, they are they have to understand that this work is serious, that they have to take advantage of what they have. The church, they cannot allow weakness. We have to fix what we are doing wrong because we cannot fall behind. We cannot grow weak. We have to only glorify the name of the Lord for everything He has done because this is a great work. His work is phenomenal. And back then, the way His servants have su suffered back then, we are still suffering the effects today. And now I'm going to talk about a subject, a subject that is associated to the time that we are living today. There are people out in the world who are who is very in, interested in the topics of trumpets, and they thought it was very beautiful and intriguing. And the topic of trumpets have interested many people, have caused interest. And they were interested in the way that the world is going to perish, everything, the way the, the rivers and the oceans, they are getting destroyed. And everything that was mentioned, people were very interested in that. And we have said very in, in the very beginning that we have seen the signs of the trumpets and the announcements of the trumpets. We And we know that when one trumpet finishes, the other one, when the other one starts, the first one, the one that came before it, doesn't just stop. They continue. We see this in the oceans and the fires all over the world. This hasn't stopped just because another trumpet is playing. They all play simultaneously. And in the Bible, it says that the, the skies, they're going to be shaking. The, the sun is going to, to diminish its light. The, the moon will no longer give light. These are ways that the heavenly bodies are going to be shaken. The potentials, the great, the great powers in the, in the sky, they're going to be shaken. They're going to no longer work the way they do today. And this sequence, the Holy Spirit has revealed all of these happenings. If we had let all of these things, if we understood all these things in our reason, we wouldn't understand any of it. And these are signs that are specific to the church that the Holy Spirit has revealed to his church. The Bible says that the sun is going to diminish its light in parts. The Bible says that the sun, the moon, and the stars, they are all going to stop shining its light. And antropic, the topic is antropic. The the angel who is playing the trumpet is going to continue to play in the oceans and in the forest as well as in the skies and in with the light. When we talk about the, the oceans, it says that a third of them are going to the, the ships the signs are already predetermined a lot of them have already happened but the part where the Bible says that a third of the, the ships are going to be destroyed this hasn't happened yet we have to be aware of this that this is still going to happen the oceans are turning the way that the Lord has said. They are, the animals are getting destroyed. The humans are destroying all these things. The rivers, they're no longer filled with sweet water. The, the water is now bitter. 
So we have to be aware that we are we are before prophecy. The promises of the Lord are being fulfilled. If we open up the book of Revelations, if you try to think of everything rationally, you will never understand anything. The human the human reason doesn't allow us to understand what the Lord is doing. We have to think of it in, through the eyes of the Lord, not through the eyes of man. And Kronos is the time of the Lord. We have to be aware that everything that's happening is the Lord. And great and very great um, theologians they have tried to understand these things and theology is all through the reason of man it's not the understanding of God we cannot look at these events through the eyes of man we are before prophecy we are understanding things that are prophetic and everything that we saw in the, the 24th was things that the Lord has revealed to us. They're prophetic. And John, the first vision that he had when he had his encounter with the Lord, the Lord sent an angel to give him a letter. And John an apostle he has an experience with the Lord and he had a vision and he received a correspondence from the messenger which was an angel and he received a letter that was given to him from the Lord and he had a vision, he had this vision, and in the vision, the name of the Lord was glorified. And he wanted the people to recognize that nowadays we have to glorify the name of the Lord. The church has to know the Lord that is glorified, know the Lord that is that reveals himself to us, the Lord that prepares all things. And then the vision stops there. And and the seven letters are the different um, historical aspects of the church. And there are very different parables and different periods that are in the Bible about the different periods that the church lives. And from the beginning to the end of the letters, we, we see that we live before the, the Lord revealed these letters to John and before John sent these letters, the book still existed, the Bible still existed. So the prophecy, it doesn't follow a rule. It, it isn't logical to man. Because if it was chronological, if it was reasonable to man, everyone would be able to see. In Revelation, it says it is lots of things are written there. And John, he has a vision, and 2,000 years ago, he has this vision of these prophetic things. And in the fourth chapter, in the fourth chapter of Revelation, it's different the topic that John is giving, because John is then transported, he sees a door in heaven. The topic has completely is completely different than the first experience he had 
when John saw Lord glorified, he he fell dead. But now, the, what's written in the Bible is not sequenced to what is before. It's different. And he had the revelation. And in chapter 4, it's talking about the open door and talking about how the Lord has voice of many trumpets and how trumpets is a signal from the Lord. And how the trumpet gives a revelation. It's, it's an order. When John was writing the first few chapters of Revelation, he hasn't gone into heaven yet. So the first four chapters is just the vision that the Lord has given him. And then after chapter 4 is when he ascends into heaven and sees everything. The Lord allows John to see all of, this, all of these things. So, brethren, everyone who's here, everyone who's paying attention, know that a gift from the Holy Spirit, I want you to tell me when you have, when you put something in your brain, for example, your mind your, your mind is thinking that you went to China. This is an example. You're in China. How much time did it take your brain to leave where you are right now and go to China? We can't count this. We can't, we can't measure this time. This is the time that the Lord uses. It's the Lord that we use in the revelations. This is time of the Lord. We can't logically think of it. There's no reasonable explanation. Everyone who has gifts from the Holy Spirit knows this. We can't count this. So when John had the vision in Revelation, he can't simply give a rational explanation for his vision. He's saying, I'm, I'm seeing everything, but I don't understand what the angel is saying. The, the gifts, like a vision, it's in your brain one second and out the next. You, we can't logically count that. So in Revelation, in every... We must understand that one time he's talking about Israel, one time he's talking about the faithful church, another he's talking about the unfaithful church, another time he's talking about the world, another time is judgment, another time is the signals. So those who aren't understanding this, they will never understand the book. We can't think of it reasonably. We have to think of it through the eyes of the Lord. All of these occurrences are invisible to us. The Lord says, He says all these things in the Bible that the, the, the sun will no longer shine. We haven't seen these things yet. They're yet to happen. Everything that is prophetic is counted by the time of the Lord, is measured by the time of the Lord. It's not your time, it's not time of man, but it's the Lord's time. And we have to enter the Holy Spirit and we have to understand this. Is everyone understanding how we can't, we can't think of it reasonably? It's not no longer in man's logic, but it's the Lord's logic. It's prophetic. This, this is the way that it is when you learn a lot of things at the end you're going to say oh I don't understand everything in revelation you can't if you don't have the revelation you will never understand the book 
And people aren't worried about not having revelation. They're not worried about this. They want to just read the book in their own reason. But now, as you saw, is there still time? Amen. We're going to now start the questions. The questions are really easy today. It's hard to ask them, but it's easy to answer them. So our first question, and we're going to leave up here already the second one because they're similar to the first one. So the question is, when the fourth trumpet sounds, what will be the first thing that happens according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? The question is really hard, right? And question two says, what is the second major happening that happens according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? So according to the Bible, what does it say that the first and the second things that are going to happen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The churches are going to be looking for the answers right now. When the fourth trumpet sounds, what is the first and the second major things that will happen? Is everyone ready with the answers? The first and the second major happenings, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The brethren are checking in their Bibles. Let's see if someone already has any answers. Do we already have an answer? Anyone in the Manai? First thing that happened. So in First Thessalonians 4, 16, it says that for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So the first grand happening, the first thing that's going to happen is the, the church going to heaven, the rapture. Can, let's read verse 14 it says for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus so we're going to read it one more time everyone's going to read it together everyone in the churches let's read for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. You see, if, if we look at this, According to the Pharisees and their beliefs, they're going to deny this. But the, the word clearly tells us that there's going to be resurrection. We're not going to be, we're going to be hopeful. The Bible itself states that we are going to rise again. Our souls is going to go with Jesus to, in heaven. And it, the Bible itself states that Jesus is going to make rise again those who died in him. It, whatever is man, whatever is flesh is going to die and our souls is going to ascend to heaven with Jesus. 
our bodies will be transformed. Whoever has the verse can read it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So those that have died in Jesus, they're going to rise again. This is the hope of the church. A world without hope, they're just going to think that they're going to die and that it's going to just, that's it. That's all that's going to happen. But we have hope. We know that after we die, there is life. So we're going to make the second question now. So now we know the first thing that's going to happen, the first major ha occurrence, which is the rapture, and those who have died in Christ, they will resurrect. Now we're going to examine the second major occurrence, and the answer is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, and the word says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall be with the Lord. So the second grand occurrence, the second major occurrence, is, is something that we, we already know. It's not new news to us. The, the first it says, first we're going to those who are alive they're going to be caught up together and meet with Jesus in the clouds they're going to meet with Jesus in the air because this time this first Lord's first coming he's not going to come down to the earth we are going to meet with him in the heavens we are the ones that are going to go to him it's not this isn't the time yet that the Lord is going to come down to the earth not yet and this coming the Lord's first coming we are going to meet with him in heaven in the clouds so this this rapture this first coming is going to be for the ones who are in Jesus those that have died in Jesus and those who are alive the world is going to continue the world is going to remain, but we will no longer be here. We're going to meet with Jesus in, in the clouds. So we're going to meet with Jesus and we are going to forever be with him. And it is important that you know that this is our hope. This is our expectation. For us, we have hope that we are we are going to meet with Jesus. The world doesn't have this hope. The Lord, the the world doesn't have this longing. And we're going to now ask the third question. The third question says, reading the text of 1 Corinthians 15, 42, 1 Corinthians 15, 42, in what way will the church be taken? In what way will the rapture be for the church? Does anyone have any answers? Does anyone have an answer? So let's go to the answer. All right, so 1 Corinthians 15, 42 says, So also is the resurrection of the, of the dead 
the body is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. So he wanted to show here the understanding of how it's going to be when the church, when the rapture of the church happens. When the, when the rapture happens, we're not going to do everything that the flesh wants. We're going to die to the flesh and rise again in the Lord. So everything that brings us sin and everything that is going to bring us corruption is going to die. When we and then when we go up to Jesus, everything that is in corruption, everything that is good, is going to live. Is going to rise with us. So we're going to now listen to this song. Glory to God.
The message for tonight, the pastors who are here, they can we're going to the pastors can give messages for the widow of Nain or about how this is the prophetic time we are living First Thessalonians chapter 4 chapter 13 this is a suggestion of the message for tonight talking about the trumpets and reaching out to those who have no hope and the message can be about how we have hope and how we will rise again and those who are hopeless if they believe they too will rise with us and they will meet with Jesus in the clouds along with us the chapter the verse of then we who chapter 4 verse 13 but I do not want you to be ignorant brethren considering those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope the pastors can give a message of hope a message of hope for those who are hopeless let's pray now Lord we glorify your name for the Sunday school Lord for the teachings and for the blessing Lord of your word we glorify you Lord for all of these things Lord the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever Amen Let's be standing. The children are going to sing a song for us now. We're going to sing a song with, for the children and then end the service. children kneel right now and the adolescents and the intermediates as well 
and let's have a deacon pray for them. Seated. Today, tonight is the last day to sign up to go to the seminar. If anyone has any questions, please seek someone today and make sure you are aware. And there's in the registration, there's an option to have. A little snack in the afternoon on Saturday and those who haven't yet put this option you will not be able to do this on the day of the seminar so if you want this option and if you want to put this option you haven't done it then make sure you get that resolved today it's a little afternoon snack on Saturday because we will not be accepting payments the time of so if you think you will want that, then make sure you put that as an option on your registration. So if you already did it, if you already paid for everything, and you, you know that you haven't done this, then make sure that you seek someone and you ask for help, or you make sure you do that before the timing of ends. If it's paid, then it's already paid. You don't have to do anything else. I will say, yeah, I don't know. So. I don't think so. I don't think so. Once, once, yeah. come, once it's closed, it's closed. O Wayne quer saber se a pessoa que já fez o registro não sabia. If you did not know about this option and you want to do it now, but you have already paid, then I don't think you can go back and and do the, and put that option so but make sure you seek someone if you still have any questions and ask again no no não vai ter nada no é também né there's going to be water for everyone. There's going to be water and drinks and stuff. But to eat, make sure you have you register. Sete. Sete reais. Para cozinhar esse é trinta e cinco. Hã? Falou, falou. Amém? Alguma pergunta, irmão? É, presta atenção. Nós vamos ter, se houver a necessidade, nós vamos ter um ônibus para levar o pessoal. Mas, pois é, mas é preciso vocês falarem que precisam do ônibus. And if people, if enough people want an, a bus, then we will be providing the bus, but we have to have enough people. The bus fits about 50 people. So we're going to put a list up on the wall of. Se não tiver 30, nós vamos alugar uma van, alguma coisa. 
Mas, ó, não deixe para a última hora, porque nós temos nos programar também. Sim. O valor do ônibus não está incluído na inscrição do And the price of the bus is not included in the registration. You have to pay for the bus separately. Praticamente cobre o quê? Cobre a a noite e e as cinco refeições, né? O evento vai começar meio dia. A primeira aula é meio dia. Uma hora vai ter o almoço, certo? E aí tem o lanche da tarde. So there's going to be a dinner, there's going to be a lunch, a breakfast, and lunch on Sunday as well. So four portions of food. And the transport, the bus, is not included in this registration. You have to pay for it separately. And those of you who do not have a way to get there can use the bus. I'm just making sure that this is clear for the brethren. The the church does not gain anything from this. Doesn't gain anything from the registration. Doesn't gain anything from the the buses that we are providing. We don't get any of this money. On the contrary, we are the ones paying for this. The church is the one who has to pay a lot for these things. So just to make sure that we are not gaining anything from any of this. The church pays for a portion and all we ask is for the brethren to be paying for another portion of that. So the church isn't paying for the whole thing. So... Reunião com os obreiros, rápido. What? Ah. Reuniãozinha rápido com, com os obreiros.